I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro SCE 813M chassis and specifically the motherboard inside is going to be the X10 SLM Dash F, the X10 SLM Plus Dash F, the X10 SLM Plus Dash LN4F. Yes, all the different variations and the memory and CPUs that go inside. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Supermicro X10 SLM Dash F and all the different variations that go inside. Uh, do us a favor, if you find anything useful in this video, uh, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get uh, let's get rolling. So um, this chassis in particular is the uh, SCE 813M. It takes a, a bunch of different motherboards, uh, which we'll, we'll put up a couple of suggested videos as we go, uh, one for the X9 um, uh, SCL and one for the X9 SC, um, SCM, and they're basically the same as this. The procs are different, but the RAM is the same, and it takes the same exact chassis. So uh, on that note, uh, this is going to be about the uh, X10 uh, SLM-F, and we said the three different variations. Um, Specifically, the CPUs and the RAM for all three different variations are the exact same. Uh, all of them also have Dash F, which is nice because the F is calling out IPMI. Uh, there are some differences in the boards um, that this video isn't going to really cover, but it's going to be like uh, the, uh, the the gigabit controller um, uh, ports in the back and some stuff like that. But again, as far as the uh, CPUs and RAM is the exact same across all three of the boards. Okay. Um, so on that note, what CPUs does it take? Well, there's one CPU socket. Uh, it's an LGA 1150 socket. Uh, it takes Intel Xeon E3 1200 V3 or V4 series processor, which is different from the X9s that we had just mentioned a minute ago. That is the real big difference. Um, and it also takes uh, Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 series processors. Okay, um, So those are really your choice for the processors. Uh, as far as the RAM is concerned, and this is where it's the same as those X9s we just talked about, the, it takes DDR3 memory, and there are four uh, slots inside. And the first thing I'm going to address, because we hear this all the time, wait, this is an X10 board. Are you sure it takes DDR3? Yes, it takes DDR3. It is one of the few exceptions to the rule for X10s that actually accept DDR3. Pretty much every X10 that you're ever going to deal with accepts DDR4. This is the one that doesn't. Uh, it, I don't know why it's, it is that way. I'm not sure how it, with Super Micro Generations it ended up that way, but I can confirm for a fact you do. You can only put in DDR3 memory inside this machine. Um, as far as the different sizes you can use, you can go as low as 1 gig, uh, 2 gig, 4 gig, or all the way up to an 8 gig. Unfortunately, no, there are no 16 gigs for this machine. 8 gig would be the highest that you can do. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can use 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. Um, as far as the types of RAM, there's really only one type of RAM, and that's ECC unbuffered, which is your traditional server UDIM. Uh, no, you cannot use ECC registered, which is an RDIM. No, you cannot use uh, ECC load reduced, which is your traditional LR DIM. Unfortunately, those just aren't compatible, uh, and they're cheaper too, so a lot of people try to use them, um, and then they wonder why they don't work, and unfortunately, uh, they're just not compatible. So you need to go with the ECC unbuffered modules. And with the ECC unbuffered, the max that you can do is a total of 32 gigabytes using uh, four. 8 gigs at 1866 megahertz. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, compatibility for the, the RAM and CPUs, uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up. I want to show you the different channels. Um, if you're not actually loading in 4, let's say you're loading in 2, how you'd properly do that, and a couple of techniques on how we load RAM just to make it a little bit easier and, and uh, make get the most out of your performance. So before we get inside, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because really you never want to be inside a machine without ESD gear, so I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. Pretty much like uh, any of the other, um, well, actually any of the other, but a lot of the other Super Micros are just going to have these two tabs right here. You're going to push it down, pull back, it's going to pop open, simply lift it up, and you are in. Very simple. So as we discussed, there's one CPU socket, which is a LGA uh, 1150. Um, one of the things I, I actually didn't necessarily address was that the uh, for the Intel Core i3, i5, and i7, it does need to be a fourth or fifth gen. Uh, processor, you can't use the um, the second or third gen, uh, so that is one thing I did want to address real quick before we got too much further. Um, so you will notice there are four slots in total, four DIMM slots. There are two memory channels, and there are two DIMM slots per memory channel. Uh, the channels are color coded and also labeled, which is very nice. So uh, black is the start of each channel. So this one right here is going to be your A1, and this one right here is going to be your B1. Then you're gonna come back, it's gonna be A2 and then B2. So the way you would want to load them would be one, two, three, four. Okay? So basically, um, 
if you were only putting in two modules, the best way to do it would be to use the two black slots that are open right now. These two black slots being the start of the channels, um, you would want to basically divide up um, the load. So uh, you'd put put uh, one in the start of each channel. And people ask why do you do that and really it's all about performance. You, you, when you think about it logically you just don't want to overload one channel and have it doing all the work. Um, so basically if you can split up the load and put it uh, evenly distributed across two different channels you'll basically just maximize your overall performance. So uh, that's the reason behind it. Um, if you're you know putting in four it doesn't really matter just load up all four uh, which is what we do recommend because you'll get the most out of your machine overall um, and really you can you know load this up and max it out for you know, 140, 150 bucks. Um, you know, depending on where the market's at on on these on these eight gig modules right now. But for pretty cheap, you can boost the overall performance, and that is one thing that we always recommend to customers. If if you're looking to kind of extend the life of of your machine and uh, you know, kind of like a band aid to uh, just get it a few more years out of it before you have to maybe upgrade to an X11 or an X12 or heck, and even in the future an X13 when it comes around. Um, the the best thing to do is RAM. In, in our opinion, uh, if you in increase the RAM and max out your your RAM, you're gonna get Get a, a huge boost in your overall performance, especially if you're running like let's just say you know four, eight, or only 16 gigs into the machine right now. If you push it all the way up to 32, uh, you're going to see um, your machine running a heck of a lot smoother. So um, that's what we always recommend. And now I want to actually show you how to physically load these. Uh, one, before we do, I want to note uh, right here in the middle, uh, you'll see this notch, uh, which is known as a key. This key is really important because uh, the key is not perfectly in the center. It's off to the left a little bit from the way that I'm holding it. Um, so if you were trying to install it into the dim slot, you'll notice there's a little plastic piece inside this dim slot that sticks up. So if you have it loaded like this, what would actually happen is it would damage the dim, uh, the leaves on the dim, potentially breaking the dim, or it would break the, the dim slot itself, which would mean you'd have to buy a new motherboard if you wanted to use that dim slot so neither ideal solutions uh, so really all you need to do is just make sure you line it up properly which in this case would be this direction so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the first module in and show you how to do it uh, and one thing I do like to note I like to have all my tabs open uh, before I get going it just makes it a little bit easier so I'm not fumbling around while I have a module in my hand um, and it, you'll also notice that right now I put the module in it's sitting in there uh, it feels like it's in there but really it's not fully in there um, and this is a really all too common error that we, we see all the time where a customer will tell us like hey uh, we, we had a bad dim we need to get it replaced uh, which you know that does happen sure from time to time but but realistically more often than not what ends up happening is uh, the customer hasn't properly seated the dim so we'll tell, tell people to just kind of rotate their dims around and what they'll end up doing is just properly seating it so what you really want to hear to make sure that you, you seat it properly is this tab is going to click into the side so you're going to want to hear two clicks and unfortunately the supermarkets aren't as loud but you hear these two clicks okay those two clicks let you know that the the modules have basically clipped into the little sides right here so we can kind of zoom in and show you the little sides right here so the tab will click in and what will happen is it'll pull this dim down and the leads will get physically inserted in there so that's how you want uh, to make sure uh, you load it because otherwise it might not be fully seated and you know then you're going to run into some problems on the back end where the module is not registering. So one of the thing I like to note, um, especially with these machines, unfortunately the cables are just right up on the dim, uh, the last dim slot here. So I actually like to skip B1 and go all the way to B2. Uh, and this is of course only if you're maxing it out with all four dim slots. Why I do that is because if there's a dim right there, I have very limited space, and it just makes it a little bit easier for me to go ahead and do that now. And again, I do want to note, if you were only putting in two, you need to make sure you do A1 and B1, um, which are labeled, by the way, down here from Supermicro. So, all right, so just like that, I mean, in one to two minutes, you can load all four modules. It's super easy. Um, it really takes no time at all, and you'll get a, a huge boost in your performance. So, again, this is what we generally recommend if someone just wants to have a nice little Band-Aid for their machine and get, get some extra life out of it and, and preserve a few more years upgrade the RAM. That's the way to do it. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you need anything from us, uh, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloud ninjas. That's sales at cloud, cloud ninjas. Our team would love to quote you some upgrades. Um, we got a ton of eight gigs in stock for these machines right now. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.